What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Bingetown TV and our coverage of Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time. It's been about two years since we've been able to say that sentence. And uh, I would say, in my opinion, it feels pretty damn good. So my name is Kyle. I guess I'll be our kind of pseudo quasi host for the evening uh, before we dive into all of the fun that we have planned. Just want to do a little quick Bingetown housekeeping. Best way to support us is to subscribe whenever you're watching or listening on right now. You don't have to do that right now. You can, you know, you can test the waters and see if you like our our jokes and, and our takes and things, but that's the best way to support us. And then the best way to interact with us is going to be to follow us on Twitter, which is at Bingetown TV, or you can join our Discord. Uh, the link to that can be found on our Twitter in our Twitter bio, or I'm sure in this episode description. Uh, it's growing every day. We get to have very nice and fun conversations. We cover way more than just Wheel of Time. I mean, we're at what we're we're closing in maybe on like a hundred shows. Uh, you know, four hundred oh, plus yeah. episodes. So like we're all over the place. You'll find people you want to talk to, shows you want to talk about, movies you want to talk about. So the Discord's been a really good thing for us. Um, but now back to the actual episode at hand. So this episode will be a book readers preview for season two. So I'll repeat that: a book readers preview for season two basically just just means that if you have not read the wheel of time books let's say at least until book three the dragon reborn then you should not be listening any further we appreciate your support but we do not want to ruin your fun so um i guess i've been talking a little bit so how about the two of you guys introduce yourselves and then kind of i guess what your wheel of time experience level is at right now all right so have I been on any Wheel of Time episodes at all? I don't believe so, right, Kyle? I believe you, you were on actually... the instant reaction. Yes, that yeah. was. Oh, right I was when we on one to Philly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the OG. <laughs> okay, okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Jim. I will not be on the the main Wheel of Time coverage because we want to keep our original crew as the Wheel of Time uh, hosts. So, Dave, Kyle, Luke, and who else Paul. was it? Paul and Paul, Paul will be your four hosts. I'll jump in if they'll have me at any point. If anyone needs a, a bench warmer, I'm ready to go. So a little bit of background about me. Two years ago, Wheel of Time came out, the TV show. And as season one was coming out, I was actually reading book one. And the funny thing about it was the hype for this actually made me read. So Kyle, Luke, Kyle was our, our mainstay here. He was the one who had already read all the books and was waiting and waiting and waiting for this show to come out and he was talking it up and we're all readers here we're all sci-fi fantasy lovers so i always knew at some point i was going to read these books we had screeners we were lucky enough to get screeners from amazon i watched the screeners and i was like you know what i gotta do it so i started reading the books now i have been doing a lot of other reading in the meantime I'm, i just started one piece i've done a lot of brandon <laughs> sanderson so I'm not going as fast as I would like. I'm in the middle of book six right now, so I don't have all of the spoilers, but I have enough where I can have some book knowledge, and we'll talk about books one, two, and three. Recently, because season two has been coming out, I've been ramping up my reading again, So, and book six is fire, so I'm loving that. But yeah, I can't wait to talk to you guys about this preview. We'll talk a little bit about, about the books, what we thought about season one. Luke, you go ahead, jump in, and... um. I'm excited to talk, guys. Yeah, so I'm, I had a similar uh, journey as Jimmy with Wheel of Time where I actually was not a huge book reader until COVID hit the world. And then I actually became obsessed with fantasy, the genre. So I've since read almost every Cosmere book. I've read all of the Wheel of Time books, um, making my way through Malazan right now, and then some of the classics. Like I've, I've hit a bunch of them. And I think when the first season of Wheel of Time came out, that was right around when I was starting this, also because of the hype. And because of that, I was able to watch the show without the hindsight of the entire written Robert Jordan series. So I was capable a lot of being a quote unquote book reader, but also loving the show. And I'm not going to sit here and say season one was perfect because the end did fall off a little bit compared to the first half of the season. But I was still just the things that they hit right. I was obsessed with it. So I, this is something I've been looking forward to. It's been circled on the calendar for two years now since we really ended. It was one of my favorite recordings we've ever done for Bingetown, especially because of the rookies and just their crazy opinions of like who the dragon is when that wasn't something that we got to do as book readers. Um, right. So all of that just... I have that all I'm, written down too, still. 
That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know exactly where I was by the time season one finished. I want to say I was about done book three. So yeah. since since the end of that, I, I finished the wheel time probably like a year ago. So I crushed Jimmy. I'm better than him in every way. So um, <laughs> you, you really are. dude. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little bit out of touch with the books because, like I said, I've been addicted to fantasy. I've been just going, 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 reading these huge juggernaut series. But wheel time is always going to stick out. And I'm just going to say this right now. Randall Thor is like a top three fantasy character of all time across all genres for me he's amazing and like he and kyle was sending us some things before we did this chat like that five minute uh it was was that the what's it called like the snippet not the snippet the um the, the, the junket the, the thing press junket yeah 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 yeah. so yeah. and dude he, i'm in love with this man dude he is the best he's beautiful he read all the books so he cares about the source material randall thor is gonna be my guy and i'm just gonna i'm hoping that I, of anything with season two, since he is going to be rumored to have a lot of scenes, quote unquote, by himself away from the main cast, like his scenes are going to really make or break this season for me. And then this season is going to make or break probably the show in the public, like narrative yeah. and media in general. So this is a really huge season. I'm looking forward to talking about it. And Kyle, your notes that you put together here, bringing me back all the settings, like all these questions. Are we going to see this? Are we going to get that event, that fight? I'm really excited to talk about this and I love wheel time. Yeah. So I guess just to reiterate, I'm Kyle. Um, I have what I've read every book. So last time when we did season one, I hadn't read new spring. I have since added that to the tool belt. I've, re I've read books one through 10 twice and I've read books one through three, three times. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm about to finish book three for the third time at the moment, kind of in preparation for the season. Um, yeah, I mean, I just love the series. Um, I, I was writing down notes as I read them for the first time. I, I still look back and read like my like live, almost like diary of reading um, the the final book. And it's just so fun to look back and like think what I was thinking in the moment and all those kind of things. Um, season one, I thought started off hot. Obviously, we don't really talk about the ending as much as we, you know, we try to avoid that. But uh, honestly, over the years, the two years since I've seen it, and I actually just did a rewatch, but I'm just so excited about the show coming back. I'm not even thinking so much about like a ton of the gripes that I had. I'm just excited to see more Wheel of, Con Wheel of Time content on my screen for sure. Um, so the way that this episode is kind of going to break down, ooh, like that one, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to kind of start, we'll talk about some things that like we know for sure. It's kind of our takes on like released content, all the snippets and trailers they've put out, then other things that we can, I guess, like pretty confidently speculate about. So this is recorded on what's today. It's so it's Thursday, 824, August 24th. They have just been dropping clips. Um, I feel like they've dropped three in the past three days. So we we might not, this will probably drop like maybe like Tuesday before the episode comes out. So there might be things that we don't talk about in this episode, but everything we'll talk about is recent as of Thursday, the 24th. And the first one I think we should just dive into is uh, Nynaeve's accepted test. So that clip, that clip rather dropped on the 23rd supposedly this happens in episode three and people are really excited about this clip because it looks pretty much kind of word for word ripped right out of the books i'll jump in i mean I, yeah let me go in, let me take this because i i have a um couple thoughts just on the clip in general like yeah this is almost exactly how i pictured it in my head um nearly identical and Nynaeve is a trigger character for me. So I feel like me I can too. just talk right away. <laughs> like in terms of the book, she is one of my least favorite characters of anything that I've ever read. But yeah, like in contrast to that, I think her show counterpart is actually great. And I'm rewatching season one right now. Also in prep, just going through the episodes. And she's just she's so much better than how she's written as like a frustrating mentor in the book. She is still a little bit like that by design in the show. But just seeing her even in this little clip, like new material, I'm really excited because this is one of the most powerful scenes for her arc, at least in the first half of the series. It's going to be amazing. And just like the future of those arcs is also really, really cool. So a lot's going to rely on this hitting because it's, this isn't going to be the only time we see these. So if the first time it's bad, it's probably not going to be good the second time because they're going to have to follow the same sort of pattern. But yeah, Nynaeve looks great. And honestly, even if, I felt good even seeing Leandrin again in that scene. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't yeah, know why, yeah. but hell yeah. <laughs> I feel good seeing everybody again, to be honest. We, we did... This uh, episode, this episode's coming out, like you said, Kyle, a week before ish when the show releases. And I was doing 
a YouTube watch of recapping season one, just a refresh. And as soon as I saw just even the first episode, the the fade, the fade to black, the start of um showing Moraine's character and then her walking to Edmonds Field, it, it I got those feels. You know, you you, ha- you have a book that you love. You're going to let some things go. We talk about this all the time, too. Like, Luke, you were saying this this clip was kind of ripped right out of the book for you. you. It's exactly how you pictured it, and I agree with that 100%. We talked about this for The Last of Us, and we talked about this on our recommendation show for Sharp Objects. When at all possible, if you have quote-unquote perfection, you don't need to change it. There's certain mm-hmm. things that you have to change. I mean, this is a four, this is a huge book series. You're going to have to cut some stuff. You're going to have to move stuff around. But if you can make it as verbatim as possible when you know this book series is money, then do it. And I think that this what we saw from this clip is very encouraging on that front. And uh, like you said, man, it was right out of what my imagination was. And it was it was awesome to see this clip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think like the arches look fantastic. The room all looks good. I'm really excited to watch this and I'm, I can't wait to get, you know, Paul and Dave's takes on this scene too. I think it's going to be really, really fun to watch. I'm, I might be jumping ahead a little bit here, but just something that I'm thinking about right now yeah, is um, like how well, I'm going to keep everything to book two and three that I can remember, but it, hopefully I don't go too far past with anything here, but like, okay, so we're going to eventually hit the conversation about the portal stones and, and talking about the shifting of the different, like parallel worlds like that you can use to cross over to places right that mixed with pronunciation i read the book so it's hard to tell around Riyadh, right yeah, like I around Riyadh. Yeah. that's yeah that's kind of how I, yeah you could just mixed, call it the dream world if you prefer okay yeah the dream world yeah the dream world mixed with these visions like how they're gonna film them like if there's going to be cinematography that actually like changes i'm really curious to see especially for the dream world because that's going to be super important but like so cool though i feel like they they can nail it and it's gonna look so cool if they do i really hope that they make something visually different about it i don't know if that's too tropey but like that's what i really Uh... want out of these kind of things like i want to know that it's not our base reality because that's so important throughout wheel of time of just jumping back and forth in certain fantasy aspects so that's what i'm really looking forward to out of these visions that Nynaeve's about to go through in her trial so that's that's the number one thing i want to see that that hits for me yeah, reading book continue six, on that I, idea on like the the dream world i feel like like obviously we're going to get it and they have been dropping hints in the promo material have we seen kind of parent interact with hopper um we got in like they have been really good with this promo of like interacting with fans, but like dropping the character posters and there was like old tongue written on it and people deciphered it. And it was timestamps for like quotes from season one in the episodes. And then like when people would guess it right, they would release the new posters and they'd have like new descriptions on them and stuff. And one of them literally brings up about how Egwene is like, it mentions about like Corianne and the deal who's like the you know the most famous dreamer from the white tower so like if they're dropping that name then like they're preparing us for like that idea that Egwene is going to get taught about that and become you know kind of step into those shoes as the dreamer and stuff so i feel like they're dropping a ton of hints that we're definitely going to get uh talion riad in this season as long as they explain that in the show then they could they could nail it just like i said because there's so many cool things like the trick of the eye out of the corner of the eye you look one way the door's red and then you look the other way you come back the door's gone or you know things like that they could do that really cool and you know we're going to be looking out for it and even how like it all they always say like you feel like there's light coming out but you can't figure out where the light's coming from and you know those kind of things are cool as hell, and I feel like they could easily do that as long as it's explained, as long as it's okay for the casual viewer, and they can figure out what's going on, then mm-hmm. they could really make it cool. Yeah, and I think they'll they'll probably combine like uh, and just kind of I guess to continue on this idea of like the White Tower and that kind of setting, like it's pretty much you know obviously a foregone conclusion that we're going to get Leandrin kind of turning confirmation that she is, you know, a dark friend. She's part of the Black Aja. She'll kind of lead them into that Sean Chan trap. And then I think, I mean, a big part of book three that I feel like something they could rope into this is the idea of them, like the Leandrin's kind of posse, like stealing all of the, all of the kind of uh, angry all and stuff from the, the white tower. And like one of those things, they, they steal a lot of things that are for dreaming. And then, you know, Egwene gets the ring 
in book three. So I feel like they could definitely combine those storylines and obviously put them into this book, or I'm sorry, into this season. Mm-hmm. And I do think one of the good things that they did for season one was introduce Leandrin because it's really not until Great Hunt that we see her. But if she's going to turn into one of our quote unquote big bads for early in the seasons, it's good to have her introduced in season one where, yeah, she's not black Aja yet, but you can tell from watching season one that she's going to be bad. You don't like her. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, she's so great, man. Oh my gosh! But, yeah. <laughs> um, to move kind of the opposite side of the spectrum, it's still in that same pocket. I'm I'm a huge Elaine fan, so I am really excited to get Elaine finally in the story. Obviously, it's a lot different from the way that we we meet her in the books, but not terribly. I mean, she just doesn't really have that Rand interaction. But we're just gonna meet her in the White Tower, essentially, just like Egwene and Nynaeve do, and. I'm sorry. That was me saying, like, I'll talk when you're next. When you're I'm, <laughs> I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. You're good. My bad. I was just so you're correcting like, his ass. You're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you're good. You're good. No, my um, bad. I was just saying, like, I'll next time you have a second, yeah. I'll jump in. Yeah. Yeah, but, you're yeah. good. And um, and I've watched like a ton of the cast interviews and things, and I think that she's just like she literally said the words like I stepped on a set and I like I felt like the pressure and the importance of like playing this character. And like just hearing that out of the actor, just like, you know, that she obviously like gave it everything she had. Mm-hmm. Did God, she say there's, there's her cons, man? <laughs> yeah, right. Are we gonna get all three introduced in this season? I guess I don't. I, I don't feel think like so. We have I think, to. Yeah. No, I at least like they... two. Well, if you have her just jump in in the tower, then the other two might not. They're supposed to be there, but they might not be introduced yet. This is that's actually why I want to jump in, Kyle and Luke. So, what do you think about the fact that yes, we kind of skipped the entire thing where Rand meets Elaine. If she gets introduced, and we're pretty like confirmed here that she's just going to be straight up introduced as hey i'm a new person in the tower that's going to meet Egwene and nynaeve how do you feel that we're not going to have that first interaction with her and rand because to me i feel like that's kind of a big deal like she sees rand it's like to her love at first sight and you know he's getting those feels as well so, and you know it's a nice it's a nice scene obviously their first introduction the thing that's important to know is viewing this through like people that didn't read the books, there is not even a single thought in anybody's brain that Egwene and Rand aren't like it right, right now. Yeah. So like, yeah, how they're going to do that. I, I feel like Elaine needs to meet Rand without Egwene being there. And maybe it's through like her going on her way to the white tower and they pass or something and they actually meet in some way. There's something's there because right now, like, She's not even when even when she gets introduced and she meets Rand until something happens, like there's no way casual viewers are even going to consider that as like an option. And I kind of like that because just rewatching season one, I'm like, yo, these two are like end game. Like, how are they not just like going to get yeah, married right. like, on the spot? Right. And it's actually going to be an amazing flip of just like the whole idea with the with the girls and stuff, which already kind of got hinted at. But I don't know. I feel like I feel like I remember reading something about how. Um, maybe it was Rafe that said something that, about doing like a really important pivotal Matt scene in the White Tower, talking about the 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 fight with the two um, brothers. Is that yeah. not something confirmed? I just thought I, mean, I you had have seen this on that, your notes. Yeah, I just thought I had seen that Galad was only gonna like was gonna start being in the show in season three. Like they had okay, so that must have been just like him. a misconstrued yeah. quote or something, because that was what I was thinking was like, for sure, we're getting all three of them. But maybe it, if it is just a lane, then that's weird. What me. an awesome yeah, Matt moment. <laughs> so oh, yeah. and I literally just listened to it on the audiobook. Like, my yesterday, gosh, I think. So <laughs> it's so good. It's better <laughs> in hindsight too. thinking about like the impl- like, oh, I'll just. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's <laughs> that's like, like, watch your, watch your <laughs> mouth, Luke. Yeah, watch your yeah, mouth. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. that concept with the series has obviously always turned to 100 of like the rereads just get better. And Luke, you even mentioned it on our first like ever like deep dive episode covering episode one of like this show if it can, you know, have the staying power, we get the full story they want to tell. Like the rewatchability is going to be top notch because, like, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many seeds being laid at at all times, basically. So that's just like, oh my god, I can't wait. Um, but yeah, the whole Elaine Rand thing, I just have no idea. I just, yeah, I obviously was upset about it because at the start, I mean, because you know, as a book reader, like you want it to be perfect and exactly like how the books were. Um, so it was a little right. disappointing for sure. I, I mean, part of me. Like, I don't think they're going to interact. How can they interact before Falma at the end? 
I mean, at the end, it's yeah. in the end. Because if, if it's not there, like, what are they just going to, like, see each other in the Stone of Tear and just start banging like they do in the books? Like, that's pretty much kind of <laughs> well, what I happens. Mean, so. That's the thing. This the end of this season. Rand's going solo already. He's not going to take his time and train with Lin and, and do his sword wow. training and do the whole thing, which kind of hurts my heart a little bit. But Breaks when Rand heart. goes solo, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't see how they interact either, to be honest. Yeah. Another interesting part of that is that they're like making Rand and Celine like that's a physical relationship. Like they kiss mm -hmm. in the yeah. clip they literally just dropped today, which is wild. Yeah. I'm so interested to see how that plays out in the screen because that is just I mean, the whole idea of Celine is just the fact that, you know, he's, he's just trying to sink those motherfucking claws into him. And in the books, it's like, you know, he's just like a young kid. It's like, oh, this is a hot chick. But mm -hmm. in the show, yeah, like, if, like they're, if they're actually going to be like banging in the show, that's crazy. I'm all for I've, it, because if you've listened I've, to our podcast, we cover Peaky Blinders as well. And um, Natasha O'Keefe O'Keefe is who like we knew she was cast in wheel time season two for a long time we didn't know she was possibly gonna be um jesus man i'm so bad with names right now it was either Elida. gonna be celine slash lamp yes or elida um i'm happy with how it looks especially that little clip that we were that you sent in the chat earlier because i'm all in i felt in my head like how is this guy resisting her? Because she was trying yeah. to bang him in the books, like regardless of what he oh ended up gosh. doing. Oh my gosh, ridiculous it's, at it's all gonna times. It's going to be awesome. And she she's going to do really, really well because she's just a good actor. And like she pulled it off at the end of Peaky Blinders. Like I'm a, I'm a huge fan, so I'm all in on this idea. But my biggest worry is I think it was like a mortal sin by Amazon or whoever the fuck greenlit the idea of ruining the twist about ishamel versus yeah. him being the yeah. dark one like are they going to straight up because lanfear's name has been mentioned already so like are they going to straight up say if you pause the screen at the wrong time it's going to say celine slash lanfear yeah. because jesus christ that. like that person i have i have to protect everybody around me to say don't pause the screen don't pause episode eight ever just don't do it because i'm luckily paul and um dave have avoided it i think kathleen avoided it i'm pretty sure my dad can't see the screen that far away so it doesn't matter so like <laughs> I'm just it's tough uh, like because when someone even says in the promotional it, material, out. the promotional yeah. material, they've already talked about it. Like it literally says like Moraine has a line in the trailer that says like it wasn't the dark one. It was his like strongest lieutenant. Uh, that's so lame because that was one of my favorite. It was probably slightly predictable if you weren't like yeah. just absolutely binging this. You were in the Reddit when the, these books were coming out and stuff. But I loved that yeah. twist at the end of three. Like that was one of my favorite things in the early books. And I just don't want them to ruin little things by not caring enough about the fucking listing of names. Like God, grow yeah, up. The, the listing of is <laughs> tough up. because that shouldn't be the way, like obviously the story should speak for itself and like do those mm -hmm. kind of things. They, I watched an interview earlier of with Rafe Judkins on, I believe it was dragon mounts YouTube. They, they do a lot of good like interviews and videos and such. Um, and he basically said that like, down to the bones like book two and book three have a very similar story structure of like mm -hmm. in terms of rand like it's kind of rand being pulled towards a location which then a shamiel shows up at they have a showdown yeah so like they they and they, i and i mean obviously we put a lot of stock into what brandon sanderson thinks because we're big fans of his he kind of agreed mm -hmm. as well that like they couldn't really do it twice in the mm -hmm. show i just wish it kind of would have happened maybe at the end of this season versus the end of last season so yeah. it just feels like it would have been a funner like season two type of like, oh my God, it's not even him versus the end of season one being like, oh my God, it's not even him. And question off of what you just said there, is there any context about what Moraine, when Moraine reveals that about it being the dark, not being the dark one, in Isha, Isha ML, that piece? It's just the like, the, it's just the line, I think, over the trailer. It's like a voiceover on the trailer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's of context, kind of how I don't know when it happens. Isn't that kind of how it happens though? But it's at the end of the their third fight or whatever it is. Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot, a lot more, more epic. Yeah, um, a lot more happens. The reason I want us to talk about that now is because have you guys seen the extra clip that they added at the end of season one? Where mm -hmm. Jimmy, have you seen that one yet? I actually have not. No. Yeah, so when I found out about that, I literally the way, just, yeah, yeah, I just went right. I thought originally it was going to be the opening of season of book two, the prologue with the dark friends meeting. Uh, it, is that in Falma, I think, or it's about, or not Falma? Um, no, I mean, that's what the scene is. No, it isn't. Was it? They're all around that round table. 
I didn't think that was what that was. Yeah, that's 100% what that is. It's the dark friend social. Oh, okay. So maybe I was just, maybe I was getting thrown off because I think they do say, I have to go back and rewatch it. So I'll just stop talking now. But I, I, I did like the scene. It's just, it didn't go exactly how I had it in my head. And I guess that's also because it's through the eyes of that random. Yeah, the man boor. who calls himself Boars. Boars, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Boars. Yeah. So it's probably a little bit different because it seems to be through the eyes of Ish- Ishmael, right? Like that yeah. scene. So that's the bigger difference, yeah, I guess. That's the whole, so when I watched it, I just kind of thought like this is what happens when you translate, you know, words. You can literally write whatever you want on a page versus actually having to bring it to life with human beings. Um, but I, I mean, they, I thought from what we saw, obviously there will be more to the scene. The the inclusion of the little girl felt weird to me personally, mm-hmm. just because the tone of it changes. I feel like so much versus how it was in the books. So it's very like intimidating and like you can feel like the weight of kind of like the dark, the quote unquote dark one, you know, and Shadda Haran. But um. The, Maybe I thought it was the more forsaken is why I thought it was different rather yeah. than it just being random dark friends getting assignments. But but they do they do show bad. like an Aes Sedai is there. They show a Shinarin is there. Patton Fane's there. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. they're, they're, yeah. I mean, there is pretty much a white cloak there. It's not confirmed because they have the black hood on. But there's a character that's wearing like an all white outfit. So I, that's what I'm assuming. I don't really know what the hell else it could be. Um but obviously, like you said, like the books is from the perspective of a character that we don't even really know. And the yeah, TV show they're gonna have to cut those type of POV yeah. moments just for the real life. Yeah. So I mean, I'm excited though that I mean, it feels kind of like I don't know. That's like a wink, I guess, to book readers. Like, hey, we included the scene. Like, get excited about season two. But I think yeah. it would have been fun if that like just kind of happened and I didn't know it was about to happen. Yeah, right. I kind of agree. Yeah. 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 Like I the understand why it opens with it. Sure. Yeah, that would be like, oh, we're back. Yeah, we're <laughs> I mean, back, it still baby. might, but it's like, okay, I've already seen this scene. So yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Going back to everything with Celine versus Landfear, and you talking about are they going to bang and stuff? I feel like they made the conscious decision to age up the characters a little bit so they're not as immature. Like we know the joke, the running joke in the books when Perrin, Matt, and Rand are always like, oh, Rand knows all about the girls or Matt will <laughs> knows always always knows what to say. And they're just talking about each other, thinking that the the other one is the one who's experienced. Um, you know, I th- it's a huge dynamic between Celine and Rand that he's like, damn, she is good looking. But, I, you know, I, I am a young guy and I have to respect her and I'm not going to fall for this and yeah. not necessarily fall for this. But, you know, I have to be. He's trying to you act know, like I have Lord. to be I have to honor her. I have to, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And uh, but I mean, they threw that out the window in season one when they had Rand and Egwene bang right away. So yeah, it'll definitely. be interesting to have a dynamic where Rand is more mature. And that tweet that you tweeted, Kyle, from our account, you know, <laughs> this time, this time yeah. around the wheel, Rand bangs, you know, that's yeah, uh, obviously know. a paraphrase. But <laughs> but that's, you know, just how it's going to go. I mean, it's similar to Game of Thrones, you know, Daenerys is. 14 in the books and they have to age her up and they age up a lot of people in the in the shows for things like this yeah mm-hmm. it's just gonna it's also, gonna make the future and i'll the i'm sorry very quickly it's gonna make the future so much more interesting because it never felt i guess like kind of believable just because he never really gives into her advances as the story progresses but if he starts off giving into those advances it's just gonna get more and more complicated i feel like every time yeah it kind of happens in the future right well, i know the obviously dialogue slapped just between yeah. them like it sums yeah. up exactly land fear's character like just yeah. that little clip i'm like this is how it needs to be and i'm fucking convinced i'd hook up with him <laughs> <laughs> yeah the fact that he is gonna fall for it right away and then he's gonna find out her true intentions and blah 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 and then he's still gonna have the attraction but he's gonna know not to, to do it anymore that's gonna be very interesting for the show and natasha o'keefe we know from Peaky Blinders, like you said, she can kill it with her acting chops. So I'm excited to see like unhinged and mad and angry Lanfear. Yeah. That version, she is going to kill it as that version of Lanfear. Yeah, for sure. And it's interesting that they, as like a, so the character posters and they put out a description, it's him and her, and they list her as an innkeeper in Kyrian that he meets and forms like a relationship with. So. Um, like slightly, co- like a slight combination of storylines from the Great Hunt. So, like when Rand and Loyal Huron and uh, Celine kind of come out from the portals and they stay at that first inn, mm-hmm. and then she leaves at that point. I, I, maybe that's what yeah. they're thinking. I, 
also, I mean, like they do travel around the four gate and all those inns in book two. So it's just going to be interesting. I can't wait to see how she's presented initially and like the way that their relationship works on screen. Because the portal stones, it was like very like there was like a mission involved where it's like, you know, we have to travel together to do this thing versus mm-hmm. if it's like them just like lounging around banging like that's just <laughs> that's it's just like such a change. It's going to be interesting to see the way it manifests. It sucks yeah. because one of my just like off the top early book memories that I loved was the first time they go up to the portal stones and then there's two options he has to pick. And Matt goes, let me flip a coin. And he goes, this is left. This is right. And he flips it. And Rand goes, all right, this one. He goes, how'd you know? He's like, I knew that's just like, it's such a cool little moment that mixes Matt's luck plus Rand's Taviran, like the both of their Taviran um, essence. It's just, we're not going to get that probably. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get the portal stones like the way it works in the hunt part of it. I We might get them at some point, but I don't think it's going to be like that. Because, I mean, uh, I hope I don't even know if they've casted Huron, but I loved Huron in the books. He was yeah. fun. Lord Rand, he was the first one that was like Lord Rand. And Rand's like, well, I guess I got to do it for this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> this guy fucking loves me. I got to put on a show for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if he's just riding solo. But um, to, honestly, to continue with the Rand storyline, another thing that we know for sure happens is Rand and Swan, they speak. Um, we're assuming that it's in Kyrian because he's wearing the same clothes kind of and whatever, whatever. Um, we also, I mean, there's a lot of speculation. I'm not as smart as people who break down uh, a lot of like the trailers and the content that we get. Unraveling the Pattern is a fantastic YouTube channel. I watch pretty much all of their videos um, on kind of in preparation for this. But I mean, people are pretty much guaranteed that Moraine's going to be there as well. So, I mean, we know that in The Great Hunt, the start of it, Moraine and Swan have a conversation with Rand. Varen is there as well. Um, I, we, maybe we'll get the part. I mean, Jimmy, we talked about earlier that we won't get Rand and Lan like training the swords, but we do get, right. we, maybe we get Lan kind of hyping him up before that meeting of like putting the pin on him and telling oh, him, I like you know that. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like death is light as a feather. Duty is heavier than a mountain. Like that's like an absolute classic line that I'm sure will be like a, like Lan will look right in the camera and wink at us and say it type of deal. <laughs> um, so I think there's definitely a way to recreate that idea. And I'm really looking forward to that scene for sure. R- remind me here. Do we meet Elida at all in season one? Season one, we did not. Mm-mm. Okay. Because we don't even go. That's the whole thing. Like that whole part where Rand yeah. meets Elida, Rand meets Elaine, all that. And Rand meets Loghain or sees Loghain. They move yeah. that to Tarvalon, Tarv- Tarvalon. It kills me. Yeah. yeah. What do you, what, because I know, because I was watching the preview and I think it's Loghain or somebody says Tarvalon and the audiobooks say Tarvalon and that's how yeah. I usually say it. So I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm an audiobook. <laughs> I've listened to every book on an audiobook. So whatever they pronounce is pretty much what I, I say Tarvalon. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Let's, let's stick yeah, in the I, same I, vein of Loghain though, because you brought him up. Um, what a fucking highlight from season one for me. Yeah. Highlight in the book. I know it's like a thing that Rafe came out and said, like, I love this character. I'm going to make him more important. I thought it was important in the book. So, like, I didn't even see it that way because there's so many characters and so many pages and so many plots you had to do. Like, I felt he got a decent amount of time in the books, and I'm happy that he's going to be more important in the show because... El Professor is like the man like he's from Money Heist. like he is a he's such a good actor. And like I just I think it was three days ago, two days ago, I watched his intro scene in um like in the Battle of Gildan. Yeah. And it's just so badass, like how he wields the corrupted um Sidene. And it's just like how he just treats it. And he's just sitting there in meditation when he, they have the shield on him and they break for a second. And he's just like almost and he breaks out like everything to do with Loghain is just badass, especially knowing like where his storyline goes i'm just really excited to get more of him so I, jimmy you were texting us in the chat and you so like you your idea was like maybe they're they're kind of mixing his and storyline a bit um right which i don't necessarily think they're gonna do but they might take parts of it and and swap i still feel like it has to be there but mm-hmm. kyle i guess that i can turn it to you is that the like what side are you on there do you think it's likely that is just mixed into him or do you think there's going to be separate roles like is he'll just be later yeah i think it'll be that it's a later thing um i feel like this just makes a lot of sense in the vein of they want to add 
more to Logan's plate because like you said, they have, you know, a fucking fantastic actor that you can't really just like shoo away for a couple seasons until bringing him back, you know, later on, like they're going to get their money's worth out of him every season as you know, he, as he should be there. Should. Every, yeah. Every, and I think, yeah. I mean, this makes sense at this point, like ran, this is the only person that he knows that's alive. And that has knows what it's like to have channeled the power uh, as a mm-hmm. man. So I think this, this definitely makes a lot of sense. I think it's going to be really, really fun to watch. It's an interesting kind of story change in the sense that like they pretty much confirmed that like Rand's been in Kyrian for weeks at that point. He's kind of like working at a like a psych ward, like a sanatorium. And they added a new character whose name's Errol. And that's like a friend of Rand's, basically. Um, so it's just like it seems to me, I'm sure they're pulling things from later in the book that have happened and kind of kind of weaving it into like this storyline that still makes sense within the world and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited for more Logan. I think obviously it's going to be fun to watch him, hopefully like give him tips and like to see Rand channel more. Cause I feel like that's what we really want to watch. Like, I want to watch Rand channel more at this point. And Jimmy, what is the last you've seen of Logan in the books? It's very interesting to me because it's not spoilerly, spoilerly to say spoilery to say <laughs> that, He's in it and then he's not in it for a while and yeah. you're not sure what's going to happen with him because he's stilled and then he's just kind of chilling at the tower. But the fact that you're reading and Min sees the Greg, crown over his stilled? head. What? What did I say? Is it stilled? What did I say? <laughs> he ain't stilled. What do you mean? Gentled, motherfucker. What is it different? Gender, bro. We yeah. have we have gendered words in this world. Oh Gentle. my goodness. Yeah, chicks Come get on, bro. Actually, you're I gonna tell me he's cop. doing side door. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, <laughs> dude? I literally, I that didn't that you when you said that it literally just went one ear out the other. I had no idea what you were saying. I was like, did I just say the wrong thing? Like, um, <laughs> we'll keep that in. I'm a, I'm a pos. I'm not a full book reader. You know that. You're better than me oh, in every way, good. just like you said, Luke. The easiest um, way to remember true, it: yeah. gentled for the gentleman. Gentlemen, yeah, yeah, you did just dunk you. on him right there. Yeah. You did dunk on me, and I want you to keep that in because I just <laughs> it. but, <laughs> but anyway, men's visions is what I'm getting at. So the fact that she has those visions always makes me feel like something's coming, and maybe what's coming is going to be coming sooner for the books, or I'm sorry, for the show, which is pretty cool because, like you said, great actor. I love the scene that we already saw in the previews with him and Rand. We have the scene that I guess we could talk about in a second where he sees the glow over Rand, and that's where we find out. That's why we find out he was laughing in season mm-hmm. one yeah. when we thought, I guess, he was laughing at Matt or, you know, so. That's an interesting thing. It, for me, this feels like it could totally be a case of, like, I know enough to confuse myself, but not enough to give myself the right answer, where, like, mm-hmm. he at that point, he is gentled. So, like, he shouldn't be able to tell if Ran can channel. You know what I mean? So that's why like, he it, it, has no access yeah. to the power. And, like, he, it's just like there's another aspect of the story with Loghain that's like there's potential for them to like shift things around for it to make sense. And maybe they will. We don't know enough off of that one clip. But for me, it was like that's a little odd. It feels too obvious of like a canon break. For them, yeah. To, I mean, and obviously they've made changes that have gone way outside of what I thought was possible, but that mm-hmm. felt weird to me. But again, it feel it could just be something that like I have like eighty percent of the requisite knowledge, and that's confusing me, and I don't have that twenty percent that's actually necessary to understand what's going on. Yeah, I feel like if Sanderson wasn't involved and Rafe wasn't such a big fan and saying how hard he's trying to make everything a great ad- adaptation. I would think that maybe it could be a mistake because in the books, when Rand sees um, Loghain, he wasn't gentled yet. You yeah. know, and he's in that cage and he's being basically paraded to Tar Valen, and then that's where he gets not stilled, he gets gentled. But <laughs> the fact that he's being in the cage in the show, he's already been gentled because of Nynaeve and that whole scene. So... It could just be an accidental thing, but I hope that there is a reason and something that we get. I, I have a feeling that it it shouldn't be a mistake just because of yeah. who's involved, but we'll see. It's also mm-hmm. tough because if it is a mistake, 
what a like what a horrible kind of quote unquote random clip to use as a promo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm sure there's an infinite amount of scenes that aren't mistakes involved <laughs> that they could have tweeted out if that one is a mistake. But obviously we'll we'll get more context of the scene. We only got what like two minutes and five seconds maybe. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um an interesting thing I want to jump to now, and Jimmy brought it up a little bit, is is men in this season. Um we mm-hmm. didn't get we got honestly pretty much the general gist of what you need to know i think of book one min in season one obviously her location has changed and things like that but i feel like you kind of for if you've never read the books you still have this almost the same idea of her that we had when we stopped reading book one at the end of it um mm-hmm. i'm just very interested to see her journey across like is she gonna be at the white tower with them i mean that's how it is in the books where like she's yeah. there with them and kind of stuff so i'm just i'm curious to see how and if she gets the white tower as a next location and then eventually is she going to end up in falma and be involved in the sean chan plot line because i mean that's kind of the main role that she plays in book two it's not a huge role but she's definitely there so i, I mean it is curious it's, to see it's where they go. important enough i mean she's the one yeah. who nurses ran back to health and everything yeah. and that's kind of where she's even though it's again to, to veer in with love at first sight kind of thing yeah. but you know this is where she's specifically like verbalizing it in her own head as she's narrating you know i love this guy i'm gonna follow him to to the freaking hell you know so same i i yeah i think she should somehow get there if, yeah i would too lukey i know you would too man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm curious too if they give us any more visions like how they're gonna utilize her in this season it was interesting to me that in the character posters it's her and matt are the two people um so we, i feel like we didn't get a ton in, of matt and like promotional stuff i think but maybe if that's like a clue in terms of their storylines being intertwined i mean maybe it's the two of them that travel from the white tower to falma in some way or or, or some kind of case because matt's storyline i think as well is is going to be interesting because he's like in book two and obviously you know he literally blows the fucking horn of valir at yeah. the end but like he's not kind of just there people comment about him like oh he looks terrible oh he looks terrible oh he looks terrible and that's pretty much his role in all of book two so i'm interested yeah. to see how they kind of swap his because book three storyline he's on the move he's traveling so is i feel that, like they could is it book they three where he's with tom yeah or is it yeah. book okay okay yeah, he yeah, gets, he gets the sure note he gets the note to go deliver to to Camelon, and then he meets tom along the way yes yes get into okay it, yeah so there's right. thought, I mean, we know, unfortunately, that our boy, Alexander Viome, is not going to be in season two. Uh, so maybe and we I thought maybe... he was messing with us. I know, Dude, I know. For sure. Maybe he still is. Maybe he still is. But I don't know. I feel like it's pretty, I could almost confidently 99% say that he won't be in this season as Tom Maryland. I feel like but... Wheel of Time, and again, I'm not doing any spoilers, but I feel like Wheel of Time, and correct me, Kyle, if I'm wrong, is even more blatant about the fact that you might not see a character for a long ass time. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it, and I'm saying more blatant than like Thrones or something like that. Like, I mean, Thrones is different because there is a lot of like each chapter is almost jumping to a new character viewpoint. But I mean, again, no spoilers, but there's times when I'm like, wow, there's a whole book and I didn't see somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it happens I guess to that's kind of where they're going at. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's but I feel what, like they, <laughs> They can't do that, I feel like, in the show with, like, Perrin and it's Matt weird. at that level. Because Matt's, like, right. really not in book two, like I said. So, like, clearly they're not going to have Donald just not be in the fucking show and then show up at the end. You know what I mean? Because right. he's literally window dressing for the most part in the book. So, I think, like, they could easily take his book three storyline of, like, traveling, maybe, like, you know, after he gets healed, somehow, I mean, maybe we do surprise, get the, you know, the quarter staff scene against the Trakan brothers. Um, and then he just kind of moves in some way, somehow out of Tarvalon and moves, look at me, the show's got me, um, and moves to Falmer yeah, right. instead of it kind of ending up being the Stone of Tear. So, okay. In the show, Moraine heals them, and that's in Tarvalon, right? And yeah. then they go to the Waygate, and that's the Waygate near Tarvalon, and then he says, sorry, bro, I'm rolling, right? Yeah. So yeah, he's technically still in Tarvalon. He might realize like i mean a lot of people were saying how again adaptation do you have time to do this but the dagger really should have messed him up big big time where oh that's like like one of my least favorite things oh i never mind i was thinking about like 
them actually using the dagger on people. But yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. Yeah, meaning like maybe in this season, the beginning of it, he realizes he's still messed up and he needs to like it. Obviously, the the darkness is out of him, but it screwed up his head and he might need to. Again, it's kind of off his character, but maybe I need to go back to Tarvalon and see if I can talk to. I don't even yeah, I don't even I'm I, just no, so I don't interested. Think he would do that. That's that's very off character. for Yeah. Matt. So, yeah, I don't know. I really, really don't know. interested to see how because at this point, like they don't have the dagger. Like, Pat and Fane already has the dagger. Yeah. So. Like, because in the books, it's the 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 dagger. The whole journey of the book is A, we get the horn, and B, we need the dagger, and we get the dagger at the end. And then the book three plot line is he gets fully healed from the dagger and then is back to his normal self. And now all of a sudden, he's, you know, the luckiest man on earth and he's kicking the shit out of people. So, like, if if such, if Pat and Fane didn't have the dagger, then like that storyline would seamlessly fit. But like, how are we going to get the dagger back to Tarvalon to get Matt? healed it's i don't know it's such a like a like a what's the word i'm looking for here like it sucks because like a lot of real life stuff went into that yeah. that decision making right like how mm. i'm pretty sure matt not going through the way gate was because of that whole decision of like they had to do reshoots they couldn't have him yeah. in the final season whatever so i have like such a blind spot for this i don't even want to talk about it to be honest <laughs> it's just but, I, I know it's, it's really no, tough. but like it is important because the one thing that you just said that i actually had written down that i that we need to talk about is like loyal is just going to be good right like i know he just yeah. took a, yeah, he took a be. The dagger yeah. slice and now he's just going to be fine and same with um uno right is that his name yeah i think yeah, uno yeah. was in that yeah yeah which just didn't nothing nothing there needed to happen i'm already fucking everybody was on the same page that pot of fame was awesome and like he his looming threat is supposed to build over the seasons or or books whatever you want to say so i I don't know what they're gonna do to save that but yeah that was like a huge fun like pool for book two for me is like what the hell like pot on fame's chasing after this the whole time and like i don't know what they're gonna do to, to fix it and like how are they gonna make the dagger a threat in the future when we've already what do you think are they a retcon things because that's always an know. option i mean because right. in the trailer there's a scene of i mean it could be a flashback but obviously we're interpreting new actor as new scenes but like the dagger's on the table and matt's there so mm-hmm. it's how does he get linked back up with the dagger if we know pat and fane has it and we know from the trailer as well that High Lord Turok eventually gets, he literally has the box of the Horn of Valir. So, like, that's, I just feel so, like, I mean, there's just space there to for things to be filled in that need to be filled in. And I'm just curious at how the hell it's going to happen and in what way it's going to make sense. Maybe it's yeah. something where Matt, it's almost like doing the reverse where Matt can feel where the dagger is and he, in the beginning, wants to go back to it because he thinks he needs to. And then it's another that's a struggle good idea. that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't, I, don't know. I wouldn't hate if like, yeah, if, if him and Min kind of meet up and then, you know, he, he gets sick again, kind of reverse of where he right. got healed. And now he's sick again, just like he gets into books. And then they tell him like, you need to fucking go get that thing. Cause yeah, you're going to die otherwise. And then him and Min are like, all right, well, we got to do it. And then the, the classic to and where everyone ends up meeting up in the same place at the end. And it's like, right. Oh, right. You. Yeah. That could yeah. easily be a way that could very yeah. easily be a way. I'm just so curious. And I, this is something that, like we're kind of talking about and dancing around it. I mean, it's involved in every single conversation you could possibly have about this next season from a book reader's perspective, but like how much of book three is going to blend into this season? Cause like, I, it's just so weird because they've guaranteed that a huge battle is going to occur. So it's like that to me sounds like Falma. Right. And all of that kind of stuff with the horn. But then, like, are we going to get all of book three? Like, we know, I mean, Avienda is going to be in it. We know that. And, like, yeah. that's a book three storyline. So it's like, okay. And then, like, what, how much, like, what level of it is going to kind of cross that line? I'm just, I'm very curious to watch because I feel like I have no idea and I haven't read yeah. anything about it. Like, it's just very interesting. I would be shocked if we get anything to do with Tear in this season. I would hope not. I would hope not, too. It's nice, though, because, like, on the rewatch, like, that, Oh, what's her name? I just watched this episode in um I think it was episode three, the rant the first dark friend you really get introduced to, the tavern girl that turns. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, Dana. She Dana, does an amazing yeah. job. She just starts listing off amazing settings. Yeah. Like that it's just like, good oh, to yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. even uh, even me too. being yeah, me being that early in the in the my reading journey, the first time seeing it, I remember thinking like this is lit. But yeah. I I think that 
um the battle of falma is one of my favorite moments of the series like that was so just vivid for me that i remember where i where exactly where i was when i was i actually listened to that in audiobook and it was one of the situations where i only if I am listening to an audiobook, I only listen when I'm driving or at the gym. And that was a situation where there was 30 minutes left and I was done work. I just walked around just just in a circle, just listening <laughs> to the Battle of Falma. Love that. Matt blows the horn. You get to see all these legends. I was just thinking like, this is what I expected in book 12, 13. I did not yeah. think we were getting something to that level. This is going to be like, if they do it right and they have to do it right or else throw the whole thing out is like Battle of the Bastards level, right? Like this is going to be one of the most expensive battle episodes i think ever especially because it's amazon just throwing money at it yeah. so they said pretty much to that effect yeah. how is it going to not be the finale and if it isn't the finale if i mean i guess they could do a game of thrones where they make it like episode nine like the penultimate and then 10 you cover some more things and see about book three but i don't think we could do anything that has to do with book three's climax at all in this season I'm maybe sure. that's like literally episode two of season three like then we do the, i don't know i don't know how they're gonna do it because like there's so much material to get through and you can't end this season on like a build up to tier that doesn't seem good when you have Falma yeah. in the middle of the season. I don't know, but either way, Falma is yeah. going to be one of my most anticip anticipated things this show will ever do until we get to the end game. So I'm really excited for it and I know they're going to hit it and it's going to be amazing. I mean, they pretty much said, right, Kyle, I, I, I think you would know best that a main reason that the end was the way it was, was because of the COVID restrictions, mm -hmm. right? Like they only could have a couple of the girls, there and then they had the trollocs and it wasn't really any kind of big battle and we can beat this dead horse like crazy that it obviously should have been ran taking care of the whole thing i feel like that could have easily just been the fix yeah. for freaking COVID anyway just have the trollocs come and lightning strikes and kills them all but oh, i wish yeah I I, I I i don't get it and i know we don't need to talk about it yeah. but i have a feeling that a lot of people agree that towards the end it was noticeable that there was COVID got in the way and people were seeing these clips from season two and even set pieces and this and that and saying like, okay, this is going to be different. You can tell mm -hmm. that we're stepping up. And as much as we didn't really like the end and just for a little bit of context as well, I was just finishing book one. So it was very fresh as I was watching the end of season one. So it kind of yeah. cut me deep too, because I was like, Whoa, this is totally different. This show is easily redeemable. You start making it money from this point forward, we can let it go. I mean, there's there's people that want to say, you know, it was, there's a lot of scenes in season one. For example, the scene where Nynaeve takes out everybody so that Logan can get gentled. Things like that where they really want to show that Nynaeve has this power that... You know, that's it's said a lot in the books and maybe they'd yeah. rather show it to us, things like that. And, you know, being able to have a Gwen who, you know, is going to be a big character, is a big character. Obviously, you can tell Nynaeve, who is a big character, you know, having them survive, you know, the, the linking and having this power. Yeah, you I can see that we can let that go. And that's an explanation to show that they're strong. It hurts. It does. But yeah. if season two starts being like, cash money like you said in the beginning of season one was you know the sky's the limit still yeah for mm -hmm. sure i think it's difficult i try to like again try to have that level of nuance and context involved where instead of just like looking at the bad things on the screen and being like this is just straight bullshit of trying to like understand maybe and a crazy quote that something i had like kind of thought about but didn't really put like like a quantitative number and stuff too is that like uh, Rafe said in an interview, he said basically for them, like it's 300 pages per episode is a kind of like an idea of what they have to do while Game of Thrones was 50 pages an episode. So like that is obviously the scale of that is just insanely different. Um, I right. wish they would have given them just more fucking episodes. You yeah. know what I mean? I think he, he said they had a 10 episode plan and they had to condense it to eight. So obviously I think that contributes to the story suffers a lot. I think he mentioned that the episodes this season are longer. They were, they kind of fought, I think a little bit for longer episodes, which is nice, but yeah, it's just, I agree in that I'm trying, you know, I think somewhat of a clean slate almost, they need to wrap up. 
I, I'm assuming that's what they'll kind of do in episode one is like reorient us, try to wrap up any quote unquote loose ends that we might have are all feeling after the season one finale. And then we'll kind of mm-hmm. just hit like the season. I mean, the book two storylines and book three storylines are money. So like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's going to and like, we'll get new characters. and We'll be like, oh, my God, they're in it. Like, oh, my God, they're in it. So like, I, mm-hmm. I'm optimistic. It's just. I don't know. The the end of the first season obviously still rubs me a little. It's the the bit thing that's gonna be rough is because season three is already greenlit and being worked on, right? Yeah, they're filming yeah. it right now. Yeah, so it's kind of like the Yellow Jackets thing too. Which wow, that's probably means nothing to anybody listening to this. But <laughs> like Great going, that's it. it's amazing to have that sort of confidence from like the studio, the writers, everybody yeah. involved, the actors, Rafe, like everything. It's amazing to have that. But hypothetically, if this season pisses off all the book readers even more, it's just going to be unbearable because it was almost already unbearable. And I liked the show. And anybody that I talked to that watched this show that that never touched a Robert Jordan book loved it. Like almost yeah. oh, anybody, yeah. which is which mm-hmm. is part of the reason it probably got greenlit to keep going forward. But I hope it doesn't reinforce the fact that they can't sandbag the little important details that matter to the book readers because as much as like it doesn't really matter of all these people constantly bitching on social media under every single post on on reddit the book cloaks like whatever you want to say it adds up and it causes like a fatigue in the fandom to the point where it bothers me like i feel like oh like if this if this isn't really good and they mix up some things like coming back from the dead like that's like a no-no like you can't do that and they did that yeah. in the fucking first season which that to me is like besides the the parent and his wife the the Tarwin's gap mm-hmm. times two with bringing Nynaeve back plus not having Rand. Those are like the two. And then the Egwene and Perrin love thing yeah. that happened for a second. Those are really the yeah. only things as a casual book reader at the time that really pissed me off. Everything else I think they can get over. But if they do even like a couple more of those things that are going to have implications all the way down the line in season six, if we get there. That's where this show is going to be banned from being like an A tier show. So that's what I really like right now. It still has a pathway to being one of the better fantasy shows ever made uphill battle because of that, like because of how toxic the fa- the, the book readers, the book cloaks can be. But like this season is so pivotal that like I'm I'm almost as nervous about this as I am for the one piece. It's not as much because one piece <laughs> live action is like, holy shit, dude, that is going to be the biggest uphill battle ever, even though it's going to fucking work. It's going to be lit. The reviews have been fantastic. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. It's that's going to be lit. So watch that too. We're going to be covering that as well. But yeah, this is like such a pivotal scene that I I'm like, I'm like nervous about it. Like this needs to hit, but I'm, I'm confident after everything I've seen, like there's nothing that makes me worried yet. Besides the, the toxicity of book cloaks. That's it. Yeah. A perfect example, I feel yeah. like, is the fact that we've seen the Sean Chan talk. They don't talk like they're from Texas, like mm-hmm. they were originally supposed to be. That's not a detail that we need to care about. Right. No. Stuff no. like that is yeah. kind of like whatever. They look, I feel like they have like a good look to them. They have those whack, you know, long lacquered nails. Like, I feel like they're going to hit the, the major notes of it. But like, yeah, it's going to change a little bit because the medium change. I feel like changes like that are OK with me for sure. I'm mm-hmm, and very the after credit like Tom Marilyn. Yeah. Fine. Dude, the after credit scene or the is that even what it's called? Yeah, that post credit scene It's after credit. Yeah. Post credit right. scene of the Sean Chen is one of like the chill inducing moments for me when you see that huge wave like they're yeah. coming to play and they're going to be a huge threat because they're one of my favorite threats in the entire wheel of time. So like if that misses, it's going to be a problem because they're so integral. But I think I don't have any doubts that the Sean Chen are going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to, I think Agreed. it's going to work out. An interesting part about that Sean Chen and change storyline is it feels like a ton of promotional material for Perrin has been him like directly involved with the Sean Chan. Like, I don't even want to say like mm. arrested, but like, they're just like there. He's literally with them in a town. And I just think that's an interesting. Ch- it seems like it's going to be Perrin is going to be like the, the great hunt part of the storyline. Uh, they mentioned in interviews where he was like, I'm alone, you know, for a lot of the series or the season rather in terms of like the main characters. But like, obviously, like, you know, a big part of his season one finale was like he wanted to help, but he didn't want to be violent. And then, you know, the horn gets taken. And I feel like it's going to be you know, classic parent. He's going to internalize that. He's going to feel like it's his fault. And then mm-hmm. he's going to get involved in the hunt. And I think he'll take that storyline, which will then lead him to Falma. And then I guess he'll get more and more involved with the Sean Chan stuff and obviously be a fucking beast. In and the, is, the is Elias cut? Is that confirmed? That's what I was going to ask you guys. 
Oh, that's I mean, a great he question. obviously should have been in season already one. Already seen. Yeah. yeah. He I would, I would say that, honestly, based off of um, a interview that I watched, I feel like he's going to be in it, but that's me only basing it off that, and it could easily have been confirmed that he hasn't been cast or something like that. But I feel like Marcus Rutherford said, like, a big part of parent season is, like, you know, he meets a lot of people that inform him about a lot of different aspects of himself, and that feels like he meets Elias you know what yeah I mean? like that's exactly yeah. what I read out of that comment so I would hope that Elias is easy like. that you can add him to the story at any point yeah. that you need to he's not for sure it's not that big of a deal that he wasn't seen last season and you uh, in your little Google Doc here Kyle I know you wrote like parents probably gonna meet Hopper confirmed gonna meet Hopper this this season how are we feeling about their communication like is it yeah just mental <sighs> and he's just he, yeah is that what we're tough. thinking that's He's not going to be yeah, fucking like, like Ooh. Hop, I don't think Hopper's <laughs> mouth will move, but I feel like <laughs> right, there has right. to be some level of voice that we hear. And it's going to be like, who the hell is going to voice Hopper? You know, it's like well, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Chronicles of Narnia, what that? man. They, that? Made, they made the lion talk. Like, yeah. Right. Didn't you like kind of yeah. like do that? I don't know. So. That's also that's a great point. I didn't even think that far through it. But yeah, I'm. it's funny because they also talk about in the books a lot of it's like parents interpreting their language. Right. You know, a lot because like it, like I just read a part in book three where it's like he's talking to someone and like or someone he's talking to Hopper and he mentions like a porcupine. But like they literally make a comment where it's like, that's not what he said. But it was like, you know, little guy with big spikes and parents yeah. like, OK, porcupine, you it's know, like type young, of deal. yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah. Like, they literally just sent images like the wolves names. It's like winter's dawn. And he's like, well, really, it's like, you know, the feeling of like a cool, crisp winter yeah. dawn when like the sun yeah, just right. rises and, the you know, the snow begins to melt. It's interesting how they're going to handle that's that. super creative i love that little that little yeah. aspect yeah yeah i mean they can send cr- like smells and stuff to each other so that's going to be really whack to see how they handle that who i mean we looking at their notes we've been crushing a lot of this i, I know you don't have yeah. a lot of things in here written about moraine um but she's like my baby girl for life and i love her so much so mm-hmm. is there anything we want to bring up about her or by extension land um yeah i, I put her back in the bath yeah, yeah, she's in a bath. I feel like that's kind of all we got from her. We know I love that. when her back in the bath, dude. And again, her and Geralt, I don't man. know. I don't know if yeah, we right? ever got confirmation from an official source whether it's like she's not stilled. Like there's just no way. I feel like it's just like there's she's, no she's way shielded and it got tied off, you right? Know, because yeah, I, it's just it's just not going to happen that way. So, and that's just an interesting because again, book two, she's not really in it you know what i mean like she goes off and does her own little research mission they have the one scene with uh the twin sisters like adelaus and i forget the other ones oh yeah 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, like the drag car comes and almost like takes her soul away and Mm -hmm. that's kind of it for the most part until she shows up at the end and Rand's like that bitch is here again you know type of dude well, <laughs> the stud at the end of book three like one of my favorite morning oh, yeah. moments ever but you're right about the um uh, maybe it's a total coincidence, but the way that they have Isham- Ishmael like still her or whatever, he, when he shields her, yeah. he like goes like this and you can see him like nod it off. And like people mm-hmm. have seen screen grabs of it. It's him tying off the weave and that's got to be what it is or else. Yeah. Who made that right. decision? Yeah. yeah what the right. fuck yeah. is that? There's it's no also way. weird because like, why the hell wouldn't he just still her? I mean, maybe he's just fucking around. He's just toying with them. I, that would be the head cannon that I'm willing to. Yeah, the head cannon is literally your our play thing. I could do whatever yeah, the hell I want yeah. with you. Is I mean, it they, the thing? Can do that. Can you even still with one person though? It's a good question, and I'm actually thinking. I don't of, like, think so. I thought the whole yeah, idea was like that's why you're constantly afraid of when when the dark ones have like a certain yeah, amount of when of, there's thirteen eyes to die. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen is is for like for the weak eyes to die. Like you can turn. Them. You can turn someone to the dark oh, side. You can with force 13. turn someone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. So what is That's it? Three big... Aes Sedai for to to still or gentle? I would just I say that Moraine say that he's is so dumb, like... strong that doesn't matter. But but also so is she. Like in canon, she's <sighs> she's not like dumb, well, dumb, do... strong. But she's up there, isn't she? Yeah, I just feel like there's a, like a, she has bail fire, like, man. I feel like he is a couple tiers above her, though. For nah, sure, he's but... be. I mean, he's he's one of the strongest Forsaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, the yeah, okay. Either way, of hope, baby. It's I mean, he, he's literally like Lamphere, Lamphere level or or higher, right? They have like an interesting, like actual quantitative. Scale it's awesome. It. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I just don't know off the top of my head. Like Jimmy, there's literally like 
written out canon like this person's a plus 12 or whatever in the terms of the power oh, really this, so like the average male is like a certain height and then like the average female and then the, like the the strongest it's really really cool don't even think about touching yeah, that you know, until it. you're yeah, done I'm the books because, yeah, 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 <laughs> but yeah, i got yeah, obsessed yeah. with that for like a week after i finished and i, I for some <laughs> reason i remember moraine being relatively high but maybe that was just of listed females and it also yeah. wasn't in comparison to a she's probably top forsaken as far as I would know, she's probably one of the strongest eyes to die yeah. on yeah. their level, at least, sure. you know, and, and they, then they talk about her that way, obviously, until they engage with Egwene, excuse me, Nynaeve and Elaine, where they're like, OK, these motherfuckers are like the real deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think Moraine for like, you know, the existing eyes to die is, is definitely like high up there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's going to be addressed gonna be ASAP, I think, like yeah. episode one. So that's going to clear it up. And that's going to be a huge thing we talk about when we fucking watch that episode. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean there's just, there's I mean, been like book two for her is like a research mission. So like it can't yeah. just be she's on another research mission. You know what I mean? She's Which is just, funny for a different thing. It's really funny because obviously we all know that they went with Moraine being like the main character of season yeah. one to fake us out because you didn't want to just say oh here's the main character Rand mm -hmm. because then you yeah. obviously know who the dragon reborn is it's going to be a huge shift especially for ca not for us but casual fans that you know they're like oh where's our girl at what's she doing yeah. we're, we're, you know she's going to be she's going to have to be in it a ton nah, she's still be, in, I mean, it's just like yeah. the ways that she does it I feel like again like she'll probably be involved with that conversation with Swan in Kyrie and she's literally from Kyrie and so like yeah, maybe she'll she be in like the bathroom episodes or... there's definitely a thing where I'm pretty sure it's like the it's either Kyrie or, or Camelin I know it's sometimes some aspects you can flip those around um mm -hmm. but like I'm pretty sure they have like the second biggest library in the world yeah they do because loyalty says that Dael didn't burn it down on purpose so like that could is a whole angle that like that's like good lore stuff which is like information that doesn't really matter a ton when we learn it in terms of the story so they could easily just slot it in here and that's cool world building and then you know we get her learning more about that and and yada yada things of the source so i just her her season potential just looks like an open canvas pretty much yeah at land did say in an interview that like the beginning at least of the season for him is like very difficult like land goes through like a lot of bullshit like a lot of shit so that's like the only mm. one tidbit i feel like that i heard it all about their storyline i like a little mystery okay yeah no i'm perfectly well, we're gonna have maureen honestly. come at the end of season one do we see maureen come back from the eye of the world or is that gonna no, yeah okay so there. she'll come back to land nynaeve will be is she going to be recovering I don't yeah i mean and, we'll see what happens and it's gonna they be already soon. love each other so he's gonna be hurting for that chick yeah it's it's gonna i think i read something like the beginning of the episode will probably be like more like an immediate aftermath type of stuff and then when we see rand it's gonna be like month aftermath type of stuff because like we kind of right. know where he ended where it's like are oh, he's setting on his own so they're gonna mm -hmm. like focus on like immediate aftermath of every other character and then we'll eventually get to like more time will pass so i guess we'll see mm -hmm. what happens there all in I like i'm i hope we see valda like yeah relatively early too because it seems like they're gonna lean into making him like Loghain, like a, a big, big character, yeah. at least. I'm okay with that, for sure. Yeah, His actor just, was awesome. Just that Wait, let's talk about our boy. Who? From the from the Last Kingdom. When are we going to see him? Oh, Arnas, Federicius, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, Masima. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably just going to be riding Ooh. with... with um. He's got to be riding with Perrin. Him. I know, I know, I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be... I think people, like, pointed out, literally, mm -hmm. in, like, promo shots... And they were like, I think that's going to be Masima. Yeah, you, he's you just it to jacked. Yeah. He just, yeah, his bicep yeah. looks <laughs> fucking huge. That I'm like, that's definitely him. <laughs> Our last kingdom home, he's just doing it big. Yeah. House it's of the Dragon, last kingdom. Or House of the Dragon, last kingdom. House of the Dragon, Wheel of Time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Living the dream. So, Peaky yeah, Blinders. I mean, I hopefully, I think same <laughs> thing. I mean, blinders. similar vein is going to be Ingtar. Like, Ingtar is a huge character. Oh, yeah. Too. I mean, he has mm -hmm. a fantastic, very, like, contained one book storyline of him moving basically like he's definitely obviously the character at the dark friend social then he'll move into his like redemption arc and i'm really excited and dude speak about our boy that's an og boy from da vinci's demons is playing ingtar i've never seen you, uh you've da said that demons. before who who did he play it's uh his best friend the the god i almost know his name the blonde kid right 
With the oh no. wait, he's, he's like he's, no, no, he's not his, not not the uh, not the assistant you're uh, saying, right? Zor, yeah, Zor Zoraster. Let me look him up right now. Hold yeah, on. not Riario. His name's Greg Chillin, which is an amazing name, by the way. <laughs> I wish my last name was fucking Chillin, just Kyle Chillin. Yeah, Kyle <laughs> Chillin. Actually, what's Kyle actually doing? Almost, he's chilling. That's almost unreal of a last name. Um, another uh, thing we. Ooh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I want to um, rewatch that show so badly, man. <laughs> the um. Rooks and bats, we dude. I'm in. We, we kind of yeah. talked about a little bit with the horn is going to be like how they visualize that too. Like, are we like, who is going to fucking play Art or Hawkwing? Yeah. Are we going to see that? Like, we literally have conversations with him. Are we going to have conversations with him or are they going to keep that in the back pocket for whatever reason? You know what I mean? Is, like, is like Brigitte in? Like, she is like, she doesn't have a speaking role, but she's in it. Right. And they dropped the doll in, in season one. So let me ask you this question. Oh, this is off pod. Sorry, I just have to do it. Yeah. Does she know that the horn was blown when she's like from the dream world and then obviously in the real world? Like, does she know that that happened as like I was pulled out of the dream world or? Yeah, I think so. Until... I believe she yeah. recognizes Matt when like well, she, she eventually okay, sees I... him. Okay, so I haven't had them meet yeah. yet. Okay. Okay. So, so like she knows sure, that she, hers, like her situation is very unique. And like you said, yeah. she gets ripped right. out of the dream. Uh, yeah, right. Of the whatever. So the like cycle. when, so when she's Brigitta and she's before she's ripped out and she meets naive and it's this big secret and blah, 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 blah. When she talks to her, does she know like, Hey, I was just doing my damn thing in Fama or is this just like a dream world version of Brigitta that I, I, I you know, like that was kind of, I think, I she think knows. it's her soul. Yeah. yeah, that version of her knows for sure. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. But like, obviously, yeah. her that's and cool. any of I don't think talk about it because they don't. No, no, that. that's why yeah, I was yeah. just wondering if, yeah. 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 So I think it's, it's literally yeah, when, like, back. I think in that version of her, she knows, like, everything. Right, About, like, right, all right. of her life. Everything about she, every version of her. And then she spun her, back out, she forgets everything. Yeah, yeah and then she yeah. lives her life. However, she finds God Alcane, and then she dies again, and then she goes back to that world and remembers that life on top of all the other ones. That's why she's, like, right. fucking OP as shit when she gets ripped out, because she has all of those memories, and she's back right, in the right, world, right. which is, like... You know, yeah, she's a freaking lives. badass. This, uh, they have a cool storyline going on for them right now with, yeah, that's with cool Nynaeve and Mogadine and... If that's yeah. how you want to say, because I've seen her at Mogidian yeah. and Mogidian. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the, it all over the. the they audiobook. actually changed it in the audio. Changes it. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, did. yeah. Yeah, I don't even remember yeah. what I say now. Now that it's you just said up. both of them, I think I'm a yeah. Mogidian. Because Mogidian just sounds like I'm trying too hard to pronounce the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mogidian <laughs> kind of more rolls off the tongue. Okay, uh, one more thing that I'm interested in um, from book two stuff, and there was some speculation about this for the trailer, but since we got the clip today of Rand and um and Celine is going to be the the Chodion call like the huge statue that they're uncovering oh, yeah. that he like almost kills himself outside of because he almost falls into the ditch where mm -hmm. he just like it just like draws him in so much and they're like maybe you should stand away from that Rand so that um mm. that's a scene that I, in my opinion 100% has to happen but I I would hope that they also agree with that but that's definitely something I'm going to look out for won't say yeah. much on it because obviously like i don't even think i don't even know how much jimmy yeah. has on it but that is one of the coolest fantasy um concepts in all of wheel of time so for sure they're there and that's not an actor that you bring back later that's something you if they don't yeah. show we that's another so, we riot fucking, and you're yeah, when you CGI say concept statue. you mean like one one male and one female has to work yeah each just one. like the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly and just i don't know how much you even know about it I forget what again, you know for me part. as far as i know uh, nah, this would be off pod, but yeah. you know, like Landfear wanted Rand and her to do it. You know, that's yeah. the whole. So point. it's just like we you, could take you have the book four context of the like. The yeah, that's it. Keys. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. gonna need to look fucking awesome though, and it will. It totally will. Right. That's I had three one hundred percent has to happens. It was that Ingtar dark friend reveal, and then Matt obviously blowing the horn. Where my three mm -hmm. like no negotiation type of deal. What about uh, uh, flicker flicker? No, I just I would love that's it. Like legendary in the fandom yeah i would love it i just don't know i just maybe i'm like i was rating 100 has to happen also thinking from like a realistic perspective i just like they're not all going to be together yeah to what do you mean flicker flicker stone. like when they when they ride the portal stone from setting shofu to go to fama where it's like rand Perry, oh, yeah 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 okay yeah, and they mm -hmm. live all those different versions of their own lives yes okay yeah, yeah. and that's that why 
Yeah. And they parent talks about in book three where he's like, you know, we did that. And I was like, fuck, like there's literally not a single life of mine that I can't escape ran. So like, I guess we just got to <laughs> ride with the homie <laughs> yeah, type of deal. Yeah. So it's definitely sick. It's just, is it going to happen? I just don't know logistically how it'll work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's I, a lot for to me, look forward to. Two is um, like the Dias de Mar, the game of houses. Great part, in my opinion, of book two. It's just a fun scene kind of scenes where like Rand keeps getting the letters and he's like throwing them in the trash and they're like oh they're gonna read into that he's like i don't fucking care and then eventually yeah, like, everyone's right. talking about him and they think he's a great game player but he's like i'm not <laughs> trying to play the game like, i want to see a boy out good move yeah, yeah. Alexander so Beyond like, knows how to play the game of houses man exactly that's part of the worry of like there's there's that's the one side where like if tom's not involved then like it's not gonna hit as hard but we know that yeah. they casted barthanis so like mm. that kind of the culmination of that storyline is kind of his manner and the party right, and everything. Right, yeah. So it's like it's going to be interesting, I guess, to see how they handled that as well. Um, but the guy, I, I just that's just such a fun part of book two that I would be I would be quite upset if we don't get any mention. Like they're going to have to mention Dice Dimon. Right. I mean, they're in Kyrie and Celine's there. She's an innkeeper. Like it's going to have to be involved. Yeah. For right. Sure. Right. I have a sneaking suspicion. I have a sneaking suspicion that our guy Alexander Vium lied to us. And that he's gonna freaking pop what a up. Freaking liar! <laughs> I I, I honestly would make my heart sing. until like are you? I thought you guys were confirming that he wasn't in it, but I was assuming that there's totally a chance he just shows up. But he's the kind of guy that just from talking to him, if he's not in the he season, they give him a call, he's jumping right back in. He doesn't care. He was oh, just yeah. in Prague recently, but obviously, yeah. I feel like everything already wrapped well, up. Like this season three stuff they're filming now. When we talked to him about, I guess, eighteen ninety nine. Remember, remember, Kyle, yeah. he was saying, you know, oh, I, I just came from somewhere and we're like, well, where'd you come from, bro? Like, you know, we're, and he was like, oh, you know, and he didn't tell us, but he's that's the, also when he said, oh, I'm waiting for them to give me a call. I'd love to go back to Tom, Maryland. I could I understand if he's messing with us and trolling yeah. us, but at the same time, he also has been pretty straight shooting with us lately. Mm -hmm. Uh, he usually yeah. kind of tells us how he feels, especially about like how 1899 was canceled mm -hmm. and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I don't even know if we're allowed to have him back on because of the strike. So mm, I know yeah. that we're not, they're not supposed to do any kind of promo. Yeah. Yeah. But so, again, he, he was for last kingdom. If those that don't know, he was in the first season and then it wasn't in, I don't think it was in, I don't remember if there was a season gap. I'm pretty sure there was though. And they brought him back. So like, I think he's the type of guy that will for uh, sure yeah. be back for this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like that almost goes without saying. It's just, is it well, gonna it's, it's going to be Tom Maryland's got to be back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just, gonna be yeah, weird. It's, it was, it's, yeah. he's too big of a character for like, he's not, he's not a Gwen and naive and yeah. Perrin and blah, blah, blah. But he's a really big character to just be like, hey, guys, I hope you remember the fact that he existed in season one and now we're going to bring him back in season three. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, feel like he needs some cameos, but yeah. I mean, maybe they'll talk about him. They might bring him up in season three. Because a casual two, like, viewer memory fresh you know type of deal but i feel like it's going to be a total like season three thing and then they're going to like the preview scenes one of them will be like that fight with the fade which is going to completely ruin right. the fact that he's coming back that episode i feel like that's, well, that's probably the thing. what's going to happen but yeah to, to the casual viewers he's dead probably he's dead. they yeah, probably yeah. think he's dead so yeah, sure. him returning should be like whoa like it should be a shock to casual viewers and they probably want to play it that way that's like mm -hmm. that fine line with like how many reviewers are book readers and how many are casual and how can you make both of them happy yeah i mean i don't envy their job for sure. Yeah, I, I'm perfectly I fine to just sit on my couch and judge the hell out of it <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of and all, like you don't have you have Sanderson, which is obviously cash money, but you don't have Robert Jordan, like just like yeah. Thrones had George R. Yeah. R. Martin for I mean, a while, and yeah. then Harry is what there. it is. His wife. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. totally helps yeah. for sure. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just a very unique challenge. Um, We're in for a fucking ride, though. It's gonna be. Yeah, yeah. yeah we really are. I'm, Either I'm way, excited like to listen said, to your I'm guys. Excited. Buys. It's gonna yeah. be. I'm excited to listen to you guys. Whether it's up or down, like we're going to be going in on it and it's just going to be a way to just outlet emotions, positive or negative. I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope the mat ch transition is, is clean and good. I hope we get all these 
cleanups of whatever we want to consider fixable messes from the end of season one. And I cannot wait for Landfear. She's going to be fucking amazing. And Hogan gets a nut. It's going to be great. You can edit that out, <laughs> Luke, later if you want. I don't know. I'll talk about it to myself. But amazing. <laughs> like, I'm ready to fucking go. I um I just want to say that I'll have a great time listening to you guys cover it for this season and then when it's over I want to do another one of these so we can do another book reader spoiler yeah. episode which that'll yeah, be sure. fun because again I, of course you guys I don't know do you are you guys going to at all like make the noobs sit out while you talk any book stuff or are you just going to play yeah, it like probably yeah. not I mean well that's like probably a personal thing and the discord <laughs> yeah That'll the be, Discord's yeah. going to be big. We're going to have fun with that. So anyone, yeah, I mean, we'll probably interact. Things, jump on. Yeah, we'll probably interact book level stuff in the Discord versus doing it on the podcast. Um, I'm just, yeah. I mean, two. My two points are just going to be, uh, again, just to reiterate that question. I'm so interested to see how much book three stuff bleeds into book two. I mean, as a fan, for me, it's like, well, how could you ever let it bleed in? You know, I mean, they, everything should have its own season. So, um, interested yeah. to see what kind of changes they made. That's, I think, the part of me that's like worried about the season at all. Like why I would be maybe like cautiously optimistic, you know, it's the caution comes from the fact that they're going to blend, you know, parts of these two books together. And then mm -hmm. the second part is that I can't wait to just watch with Paul and Dave. Yeah. You know, and then also sure. hearing from like B Tom's and like, you know, my mom, my sister and stuff just to hear their takes on like new wheel of time content. That's I was, I think honestly the funnest part of watching the show was getting them and like their theories and like some of them, you know, maybe they're right. And some of them are just so left field that it's hilarious. Like I just re-listened to the, um, the first episode that we did of episode one and just the shit Paul was saying was so funny where he's like, you know, Trollocs, like, can they only come out at night? Like, do they get powered from fire? <laughs> like, it's just so funny to think about like, yeah, like I, if you didn't know anything, like that's not a terribly unreasonable thought line. So mm -hmm. it's going to be fun to see what else they come up with. And in one That's of our fine. group chats that we, we do the Wheel of Time talk, I think it's just, I don't know if Jimmy's in it, but is it just us? It's just the podcast. It's just uh, like scheduling. Yeah. yeah. So Dave's in the process of rewatching, prepping for the season. And I remember, like, he always loved this show. And he was saying it even today. He, I think our negative talk from a book reader's perspective talked him down a little bit when we gave her final tier list, but he is adamant. Like he's like, this is at least an A tier show. And I love to hear love that, it. especially from someone that like we respect his, his TV opinion and he's not a book reader. So that kind of is like the perfect audience member. If you're not right. like a diehard uh, fan. So like, that's what I want to see. Um, Alki's a little bit lower on it, but he doesn't even remember the finale. He said he was drunk. So I don't even respect his opinion. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Paul was at least a B two, if not an A, I don't remember. Uh, I'll have to go back and look, but I think we're going to be fine. And I think at least the ride of season two is going to be really fun. Agreed. For sure. All right. Um, yeah, we didn't talk to like a bunch of book three things, but I think it's fine because I'm starting to, the more we talk about things, I feel like it's not a ton of like big hitter stuff from book three is going to make its way over. So I think mm -hmm. that we'll talk about that. Honestly, I think at the end of the season, we're going into season three, like what is going to happen type of deal. So I'm excited for that conversation as well. If you like what you heard, as I said at the top, the best way to support us is subscribing on whatever you are listening on or watching on. Um, the best way to interact with us, we've mentioned it throughout here, is definitely the Discord, Twitter as well, at Bingetown TV. The links to the Discord can be found in our Twitter bio, and I'm sure linked to this episode because Jimmy does everything perfectly. And uh, I mean, what else do we have going on? One Piece. One Piece. Live action. Dropping on Netflix. We're going to be covering that. We are, you know, some of the biggest One Piece fans that I know personally, and I know a lot of people, so I argue to say we're the biggest One Piece fans in the world um what else is going on jujitsu kaisen we're on a big anime like kyle content kick right now which is actually fantastic <laughs> um so yeah we're just um we're covering a lot of shows like i've said we've done a we've done a ton of stuff in the past as well so if you like what you heard check out all of our other stuff and uh, and follow along when season two of wheel of time drops on amazon prime because we'll be here for every stinking episode uh once again we are binge town tv and thank you for listening